So hang on, we're gonna try this again. We're gonna go back out here. Now that I have my shoes off, Ross right. is gonna show me how I'm gonna show you on. how somebody's already been through here in the morning, because you can see right here, as a fresh cracked oyster shell, because it's still nice and white. You can see them over here, here, and you just have to kind of, you train your eyes on them, and you can actually learn, it's like here, some oysters right here. This one, all you would need is just the right hammer and you can crack that oyster right off the rocks here. And you can see them. All you have to do is start looking for them. You will find the ones that are just open because you can see old ones are gonna be old and green and crusty, but somebody just came through in here and hunted them. You can see those are just freshly open, nice and white still. So somebody came by here this morning and robbed them of their oysters. And people come here every morning and make a living doing that. And when we're headed to the Fisherman's Village, you'll actually see the oysters in a bag with salt water ready to eat, and they're absolutely delicious. All right, while we're while we're standing here, thank you. While we're standing here, can you give me a little bit of info on this island out here that we see? My wife has spent a lot of time on that island growing up as a kid with her father. One of the islands, I forget which one of these three, but as she points it out to me, I'm never really paying where she's paying where she's pointing to. But it's one of these small islands that her and her father would spend a lot of time on them as he was a fisherman. So early morning trips out to the islands where his fishes and his crab boxes and his known as bamug or squid boxes were would go out there and then he'd come back in the evening and she'd be running away to go find doing something else other than fishing. And as you can see while we're standing here, maybe just in the last 10 minutes, how the tide has risen about a foot and a half already on the land. And so the yep. tide's coming in really quickly right now. And just as fast as it comes in, four hours from now is as fast as it will roll out of here. The waves that you're looking at, this is what it's like all the time. They never get any bigger than this, never get any smaller. It's just a very nice, gentle waves all day long, perfect for swimming. And as you felt the water, it's really calm. Is the beach clean here? The, well, you can see the sand here, and comparing it to Pattaya, this beach is phenomenal. And as we head over to Sunsun Beach, the main part of it, it's all very clean. The only thing you're gonna see a lot of are shells. You will see lots of little baby crab shells, sand crabs, oysters, scallops, you can find all that stuff all around here. All right, I just want to say before I cut this video right here uh, and shoot the next part, that this is officially the most beautiful place I have seen in Rayong since I have been in Rayong. And as I told you guys, I have friends that live here. Um, I've been here several times for several different reasons. And uh, this absolutely tops the chart. So maybe we'll top it again later. I'm not sure. So. Lucky me, uh, I have to carry my cell phones wherever I go, so I'm always available. And you can even get a great cell signal right at the beach because here's the giant cell tower. The sirens up there, you would think they are for tsunami warnings, but this is the Gulf of Siam. We're not in the Ring of Fire area. We don't have tsunamis here. We don't really have waves. We just get the wind like this and occasionally a high tide from the moon tides. Like we had the black, what was it, the black moon, blood moon, black moon, whatever it was, the blue blood moon we had a couple months ago. I don't remember the name of it. Anyway, uh, when that happened, when we were going back over there, the water rose all the way to the street level in Sonsun Beach from, because of that tide. It, it was about five feet higher than normal. So we did have a flooding from the ocean purely from that blood, blood moon that we had back in February. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> I don't really know why. But yeah, that made a mess of the, of the water. And we had a really bad wind. And on that particular night, we had waves like three and four feet high. 30 plus years ago, where my wife grew up, there was a flood, but not from the ocean. And the dam had broke. And within an hour, this whole area became flooded from the dam, from the reservoir that's up in the mountains. And since that time, they've never had any other kind of flooding. But you can still actually see some areas where that flood was more than 30 years ago, where people's homes, you can still see the line where they never really got it cleaned up all the way. These flowers on this tree here are probably the most pungent smelling, sweet smelling flowers you'll ever find in Thailand. It's like a cross between a rose, honeysuckle, and jasmine all rolled together and not very big. And you'll see a lot of this particular flower turned into barrettes for women and they make them in plastic and women will put them in their hair because it's a very popular flower in Thailand but the smell unfortunately the camera can't pick up the smell but when you get here you can smell them for yourself and find out